the presence of the other and the particular qualities they display encourages us to look for the same qualities in our own tradition, elements that may simply not have been emphasized in recent times. Moreover, we obtain a different perspective on ideas and values within our own tradition that we, have may, that we may have taken for granted. Seen through the eyes of the other, they take on new dimensions, and we may learn to value them afresh. It is also very sanguine to learn that some of the most valued truths sound like through the, through the ears of someone else. Sometimes their narrowness or polemic nature are exposed, which can be most disturbing. Arguments about exclusivity, uniqueness, and special emphases that we assume belong to our tradition alone may sound a little hollow when we encounter them elsewhere, even with minor variations. The commonality of many religious ideas can even be quite disconcerting when we have built up our own views in contradistinction to an imagined other. Certainly, such a situation takes the edge off the customary triumphalism that has all too often been the hallmark of our encounters in the past. The other side of this is the need to make theological space for the other, which is itself a delicate matter. For we need to create for ourselves an understanding of where we locate the other, but without falling into the old trap of creating simply a new stereotype of the other, even a more positive one, but still does less than justice to their complexity and multifaceted reality. That is to say, we have to become engaged in a process of continuing adjustment, reflection, and empirical testing, rather than settling for a tidy, closed formulation. My conclusion. In the face of overwhelming, potentially destructive forces operating in the world today, often motivated by politicized religious teachings, the individual gains in mutual understanding and trust made by interfaith dialogue seem small and insignificant. Yet as the Catholic theologian Hans Kung has formulated it in his quest for a world ethos, no peace among the nations without peace among the religions, no peace among the religions without dialogue between the religions, no dialogue between the religions without investigation of the foundations of the religions. Or as I have myself occasionally expressed it, in the past, the three monotheistic religions have defined ourselves in contrast to one another. Now, we have to learn to define ourselves in relationship to one another.